let's begin our session on idea ideation based on artificial intelligence uh, before we begin i would like to know am i audible properly yes, and is my screen visible yeah. thank you all so the agenda for today's session is what we are going to look at is history of ai how ai evolved ai means artificial intelligence evolved what exactly is artificial intelligence what are the different domains in which artificial intelligence is being used how ai is different than machine learning and deep learning because we always get confused about what is ai what is machine learning and what is deep learning and we uh, finally end up using these terms interchangeably okay then what is the process of machine learning in order to apply machine learning for any application what process do we follow what are the types of learnings possible in machine learning which algorithms are used in machine learning what how deep learning is different than machine learning what are the models of deep learning and how will you select any particular deep learning model based on your application is okay, so all this we are going to discuss in today's session okay so before i tell you what is artificial intelligence i would like to know from your end what artificial intelligence is or what do you think artificial intelligence is you can put your answers in the chat box or you can unmute and tell me whatever comes to your mind how will we define artificial intelligence anybody okay so artificial intelligence is the term which was coined by john mccarthy okay who was one scientist and in dartmouth conference he coined this term artificial intelligence and what is his definition of artificial intelligence so according to john mccarthy artificial intelligence is science and engineering of making intelligent machines okay you want your machines your computer systems to become intelligent the way humans are intelligent you want your machines also to become intelligent so the science behind making machine intelligence or the technique you use for making machine intelligence is called as artificial intelligence the methods the techniques you use in order to make your machines intelligent is called as artificial intelligence from the word artificial what comes to our mind anything which is not natural which is man made okay so artificial means man made intelligence and whom are we trying to give this intelligence to to the machines because machines even though they have a good computational power they cannot think the way you humans can think machine cannot make decisions the way humans can make decision okay if we want machines to make decisions we have to program them like that okay so the whole exercise here is to make machines intelligent the other way we can define artificial intelligence is the theory and development of computer systems which are able to perform task which normally require human intelligence so if as a person i want to recognize any other person so face recognition is a method i am using who is speaking i need to know who is speaking what he is speaking so speech recognition i am using so these tasks as a human we can do it easily but we need this opportunity to teach machines how to do face recognition how to do speech recognition how to do how to translate a sentence of one language to another how to make this take decisions so develop computer systems for enabling them to do these tasks which require intelligence human intelligence is nothing but artificial intelligence okay now what are the different domains in which artificial intelligence is used we are going to look at that okay but before that let's first understand how artificial intelligence evolved 
so the evolution of ai started in year 1950 when alan turing he was a scientist he published one paper okay and in that paper technical paper he speculated that machine we the, there should be a machine which should be able to think like humans can think okay in future in real future near future human ability to develop a computer system which can think like humans and which are intelligent like humans okay and in that paper he has proposed one test called as turing test okay he has proposed one test called as turing test so what he had said if a computer system is able to do conversation and this conversation we are making with computer system cannot be distinguished from the conversation we make with a human then we will say that yes machines are intelligent and they are able to make decisions okay so this is his turing test the turing test says if a computer system is if a machine can do a conversation the way humans can converse and there is no there is no way we can distinguish whether the conversation is happening with a machine or with, whether it is happening with a human if you cannot distinguish the conversation then we will say that machines have become intelligent and that was his turing test until date there is no machine or we haven't reached to that point where we can say that this machine is successfully passed the turing test no such technology technology has come on no such model has been created so far which can clear the turing test okay so after 1950 in 1951 uh, there was a scientist called as christopher stanley starchy who developed a chess program and a checkers program okay that program was able to play against human okay this was followed by uh, in year 1950 1956 when john mccarthy coined the term artificial intelligence for the first time the term artificial intelligence was coined by this person called as john mccarthy okay later on in year 1956 the first research lab for conducting research on artificial intelligence was set up and that was mit lab so the setup of mit lab happened in year 1959 from where the research in ai started okay this was then followed by introduction of the very first robot okay and this the robot was introduced for the very first time on the assembly line of general motors company okay general motors company in their assembly line started using the very first robot and that happened in year 1960 okay this was then followed by uh, in 1961 uh, the first chatbot called as eliza was introduced okay introduction of the first chatbot called as eliza was happened in year 1961 currently we have alexa and siri are the chatbots being used then came the accomplishment year of ai year 1997 where ibm had uh, their uh, software called as deep blue or the ibm's deep blue program was able to defeat the world's chess champion gary kasparov okay that was defeated by a uh, ibm's deep blue software okay which is based on ai it was one of the accomplishment of ai then in year 2005 another accomplishment of ai was when Uh, the darpa grand in darpa grand challenge a robotic car stanley was the winner okay the the car part the robotic car participated and that became the winner this was then followed by in year 2011 with ibm uh, had their system or their software or ai based system called as watson okay so watson is a computer program which to which you can pose questions in natural language and it will respond to those questions okay so nlp based on natural language processing this watson of ibm is based okay and still the as you know things are getting evolved only so 
AI started from year 1950 until date, some or the other enhancement is happening in the domain of artificial intelligence. Then comes the application areas of AI. Where is AI being used? In which all domains AI is being used right now? So you can see there are these are some of the domains which are using artificial intelligence. Basically, in our day-to-day -day life, in all the things we, we which we do, knowingly or unknowingly, we are using artificial intelligence. Okay. If I talk about healthcare sector, can anybody tell me an example of how AI is being used in healthcare sector? Some examples, if you are aware of. Yes, can I have some answers, please? Yeah, please. Chand, Saubuli. Ma'am, for identifying uh, differences or anomalies in the blood pressure. Okay. So, difference in the blood pressure. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we will see some of the applications of AI now. How AI is being used in healthcare. So many of us or we have seen people wearing this wearable uh, trackers, Fitbit and the Apple's watch. Okay, what is the purpose of wearing this uh, devices? Why, why are we wearing this kind of devices nowadays? Don't have an access to chat. What these devices help me to identify? They help us to track different uh, parameters like your oxy blood oxygen level or your uh, blood pressure, etc. Correct. So these devices are able to monitor my health by observing the parameters, like which kind of parameters I can, uh, are observed, the sleep pattern, the eating habits, the blood pressure, the heartbeat, heart rate, the activities of the person is doing. Considering all these factors, uh, all these parameters, you have made these devices smart enough to predict is there a chance of a heart attack or whether there is a chance that your health will get affected okay so still enhancement is going on in this sectors where prediction of the diseases will be happen or user will be intimated in advance about the chance of having any health problem in future okay so the variable trackers are based on artificial intelligence then AI based virtual nurses are being used when it is not possible to physically go and visit a doctor or take assistance from a nurse. Then AI based virtual nurses are helping in that part. Robots are being used for performing surgery. Da Vinci is one of the robot that is used which will help the surgeon in carrying out his surgery in, a, in an accurate way or he will assist the surgery while it is being performed by a doctor okay ai is also being used in analyzing the medical images so the images like ct scan of a person or mri scans of a person they are the images which are needs to be studied thoroughly by humans the radiologists have to study ct scans and mri scans thoroughly in order to understand the presence of a tumor in that scan okay it may happen that humans do not make mistakes while scanning these images and hence fail to detect the presence of tumors because the tumors are hidden in the background they are not clearly visible in the scans so it may happen because humans have their limitations in analyzing images but when these images are if artificial intelligence is used for scanning these images there are algorithms image enhancement techniques, which when they are used for scanning the MRIs and CT scans, then identification of the tumors, their location becomes easy. 
AI is also helpful uh, to develop new drugs and vaccines. Okay, so in, when a new drug is to be or a new vaccine is to be developed for any uh, disease, like how Corona had uh, affected us, and then at that time there was a need of immediate, uh, a new, uh, urgently a new drug and a vaccine was to be produced. So AI helps in speeding up the process of developing new drugs and vaccines. Because of supercomputers, AI using AI technique, you can predict from the database of molecular structures, you will be able to uh, predict which molecular structures, if I use in a medicine, will have an effect, be an effective for this particular disease. So AI can help in deciding which molecules I should select from the databases of molecular structures, which, which molecule I should add in my drug that will help in the effective medicine for that particular disease. So these are some of the areas where AI is playing a role in healthcare sector. Then comes other areas where AI uh, is being used. In automobile industries also are using AIs. We all know about self-driving cars proposed by Tesla. Okay, what are they trying to do? They want cars to be driven without human intervention. Okay, they want cars to be developed without human intervention. So like how human, while driving a car, understand traffic signals, understand people walking on the road, understand other vehicles on the road, and then decide the path. Okay, similarly, the cars using their camera, their sensors, should be able to understand the environment and should take the decision of changing the driving speed, applying brake, and so on. Okay, so the self-driving car is one of the area where artificial intelligence is being used. Then comes in the banking and finance sector also. Uh, in order to help customers, okay, when, when for customer service for 24 by 7, human representatives won't, are not avail, available to service the customer. So AI bots are introduced. Okay, robot traders. Okay, these are the robots who will do trading on behalf of the uh, humans. So Nomura Securities have their own uh, robot traders, uh, which does does trading on behalf of humans. Now, while doing banking transactions, we use credit cards, we use debit card when we use uh, do banking transactions. So there is a huge chance of fraud detection happening of credit card or debit card. So artificial intelligence even allows to detect these kind of forms. Credit card can be done by applying artificial intelligence. Then comes surveillance. Okay, surveillance is in order to ensure cameras are Okay, but these footages of CCTV cameras needs to be monitored if if a theft has happened or anything wrong is happening in our environment. Okay, there we need a human who will observe the CCTV footage and will try to understand what has gone wrong, who was the person who entered the environment, our society, and so on. So, re for surveillance purpose, even though CCTV footages have the recordings, but the recordings needs to be seen by the humans to understand what has gone wrong okay now ai is coming into this domain this area also where cctv footages will be monitored on a real time basis to understand what the what the probability that unknown unknown person is entering the society with unknown with uh, with sharp instruments in his hand like knife or these kind of things so detecting real-time monitoring of CCTV footage. In social media, which we often use every day almost, so, so social media platform also is using artificial intelligence to identify hate speeches posted on Twitter, okay, to identify the terrorism activities that is happening on the social media post. If through some accounts, continuously the violence, uh, the the speeches, the videos, terrorism, these kind of information is being pushed on the social media handles. 
will be identified through the use of artificial intelligence. Then you all might be aware of auto tagging facility of a Facebook. Can anybody tell me what is auto tagging facility of Facebook? Yes, you can put it in the chat box also. What is auto tagging facility of Facebook? So when we upload any group photograph on the Facebook, okay, using face recognition, it will identify the people present in that group photograph and will tag them automatically. Okay, so face recognition is used to identify people and then those people will be tagged automatically. Okay, then on social media, the advertisements that are shown, they are targeted advertisement means personal recommendations kind of things. Advertising for those particular person is then displayed based on his previously searched pattern, means his browsing history, based on his age, based on his location, some advertisements will be shown to him. Currently, even the AI tools have been developed which can write Facebook post on behalf of you or which can create an ad on the Instagram. Okay, automatically Facebook post will be returned on behalf of human and even the ads can be posted on the Instagram. Okay, this is the use of AI on social media. Then in the domain of entertainment, when we use Netflix or when we use Amazon Prime, movies are recommended or the web series are recommended to user based on their browsing history, their previously watched movies, based on their profile, the recommendations are given, okay? In the education sector also, artificial intelligence is being used. The softwares are developed which will assist teachers, okay, in making a question paper. Automatically, a question paper will be formed. Okay, instead of a teacher making a question paper, automatic generation of a question paper, okay, using artificial intelligence is being done. Similarly, for grading the answer papers or for grading the assignments which are written by the students, even for that, artificial intelligence is being used. Okay. So let's say one essay has been written by a student. So as a human, I'm scoring the essays written by two students. I will read the essay. I will try to understand whose essay is more effective and accordingly I will grade. So this kind of intelligence of understanding good content and all is then given to the machines so that machines will understand whose essay is better than the other persons and will accordingly give a score to that particular essay. Uh, in, in space exploration programs also artificial intelligence is being used. So unmanned vehicles, unmanned space explorations like Mars rover is being sent uh, to space. So without a human present there, unmanned space vehicles are sent to the space to the to the mars or to the other planets the autonomous spacecraft the spacecraft which can uh, which doesn't need any human assistance in order to go in the space and to operate there so autonomous spacecraft in the gaming region you all might have heard about alphago alphago is the software uh, based on ai which can play the Go game. It's a board game actually. Okay, so AlphaGo is for that. For IBM Watson, I told you what is IBM Watson. What is IBM Watson? The question answering system. Okay, where you can pose your question in natural language and the system will respond. Okay, then what is Deep Blue? It is a chess program. Okay, AI based chess program which can play against humans. In robotics, robots are being designed or being developed and is being used in various sectors nowadays. In medical sectors, robots are being used to take care of patients. Okay. Uh, in uh, manufacturing industry, robots are being used at the plants to, to speed up the manufacturing process. Okay. For transporting things from one place to another, robots are being used. In order to do the household, uh, how, the houseworks also, the cleaning work, the assistance to the elderly people for all that purpose robotics is being in for in, in in robots 
artificial intelligence is is imbibed okay so these are some of the domains where we saw artificial intelligence is being used here i forgot about agriculture and e-commerce can anybody tell me how artificial intelligence is used in agriculture sector because lot of work has has happened in, in this domain can i please have some answers from you so at use of ai in agriculture is at multiple locations and at multiple places okay ma'am it can be used for uh, water irrigation like what specific time of the day you have to irrigate it yes correct that is one of the application any other application anybody can help me what can be the other application of ai in agriculture Ma'am, recommendation of fertilizers based on soil content. Correct. Okay, that is also one of the application. Ma'am, detection of diseases in the plants. Correct. Very true. Ma'am, climate change. Which crops? Yes. Which crops we can grow, ma'am? Come again. So, ma'am, which 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 crop we can grow according to the content of soil? so on this slide i have listed down some of the use cases where ai is being used in agricultural domain crop yield prediction and price forecast by looking at the size of the farm by looking at the current growth of the plant you had put in the farm by looking at the current growth of the plant and by looking at the farm size ai the, the algorithm will be able to predict how much yield will be generated from this particular farm okay by giving the size of the farm and the current uh, uh, quality of the current uh, or the status of the uh, crop how how uh, short or tall they are that is identified and then yield is predicted what will be the yield from this and even uh, you can use ai to forecast the prices for the next few weeks by looking at the market conditions what will be the price of onion or tomato for the next few weeks so forecasting price of some commodities in the next few weeks so that farmer will understand in which week i should sell my product so that i earn maximum profit okay, so today if i come to know that the onion prices are going to rise by uh, 50 rupees in next week what i will i as a farmer what i will do i will try to store my onion rather than selling it right now and will try to sell it in the next week so this will help farmer to earn maximum profit then intelligent spray so ai based sensors can be used which will detect the weed affected areas and will precisely spray herbicides only in that particular region which are affected by the weeds what happens because of this the usage of this herbicides is reduced you are using less herbicides you are using it only on the plants which are affected rather than spraying it on the end, all the all the plants or crops which are which are even though at good condition you are unnecessarily spraying herbicides on them okay so this reduces the use of herbicides which is actually a good for human health also and it, it is even helpful to the farmer because he doesn't have to spend too much on the herbicides okay predictive insights so ai will help farmer to tell him what is the right time to sow the seeds okay the date and duration during which he should sow seeds of a particular plant in order to gain maximum productivity okay for this uh, the algorithm will use uh, parameter will study the parameters like weather conditions what is the current weather condition he will study that he will try to the algorithm will may try to know what is the status of the soil what is the quality of the soil and will then tell when what is the right time to sow the seeds in a farm to get maximum profit okay then robots are being used in the agricultural domain to pluck only the ripe fruits okay uh, for a uh, strawberry in for strawberries and for mangoes even the robots are being used so that only the ripe fruits are picked up 
okay and the work happens at a faster pace because you don't have to depend on a labor for it getting a labor at village places is a big challenge what farmers face okay then crop and soil monitoring so using machine learning and artificial intelligence the health of the crop can be monitored on a regular basis to diagnose whether any pest has affected them whether the soil quality is deteriorating with the help of sensors it can be identified whether the npk parameters so nitrogen phosphorus and potassium content of the soil are as expected or not and if they are falling if npk value for a particular soil is falling then fertilizers needs to be added so farmer will be intimated farmer will be will be informed that the soil quality is reducing which fertilize uh, the value of sodium is degrading so add a corresponding fertilizer so recommending fertilizers when the soil quality degrades okay that is one thing disease diagnosis as one person said so understanding by continuously monitoring the farm area to understand whether the plants are getting affected by any disease so early diagnosis of any disease happening in the plant by looking at the leaves of the plant or by looking at the color of the uh, the color or shape of the stem it can be understood whether the plants are getting affected by any disease or not. okay so that if the farmer is informed in a, at an early stage he can immediately use some treatment to save his plants from further degrading okay so these are some of the areas where agriculture ai is being used in the agriculture domain in e-commerce sector we all have somehow used this we all use e-commerce websites very often and that is why we all have experienced this kind of uh, what facilities while using the e-commerce website okay personalized recommendation that we all know based on our browsing history our previous purchases based on our preferences our profile our age location some recommendations will be given to us so they will try to recommend you may like this you may like to purchase this okay then virtual shopping assistance is provided chatbots are provided to enhance the service of the customer while uh, using a e-commerce website of doing the while doing the online payment on the e-commerce website a frauds of credit card or uh, can happen or internet banking may otp is getting st uh, getting uh, uh, stole or some kind of these activities may happen so detecting these kinds of frauds for that also artificial intelligence helps businesses gets when any customer wants to buy a product what is the first thing he does he sees product he understands the details of the product plus we always have a habit of checking the reviews by people who have already purchased the product and have used the product now if the reviews posted on the e-commerce portal are fake reviews what will happen a customer may not buy that product by looking at the reviews and this in turn will affect the business e-commerce companies making so it is very important to identify these fake reviews posted by the customer so for identifying these fake reviews also artificial intelligence helps okay search optimization so when whenever we are searching any particular product the search should happen in an optimized way to ensure that whatever person is searching for is shown to him the exact product is shown to him whatever he was looking for for supply chain management so using artificial intelligence a demand for different products is predicted in different time frames so based on the historical data or the previous years data uh, the ai will be able to predict that in particular month let's say diwali so october november is a month where maximum sale happens on the portal or at the time of independence day a maximum sale happens on the portal so based on this time frames the demand the, uh, the prediction of the demand is done which then help the e-commerce portal to keep ready the stock so for managing their stock which can meet the demands of the customer uh, the preparation can be done so these are some of the areas where artificial intelligence is being used okay 
this i've already told you how ai is being used in healthcare sector okay so we saw what is artificial intelligence we saw the domains where artificial intelligence is used now all of us knowingly or unknowingly use these three terms as one term only ai ml and dl for us it is same but ideally it is not so i told you what is artificial intelligence okay machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is again a subset of that machine learning okay we will again see what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning that is also we are going to study later okay what is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence means making your computer system intelligent so that it can make decisions on its own machine learning enables or machine learning is a method by which you make your machines intelligent so it is a subset of artificial intelligence using the algorithms proposed by machine learning you are going to make your machine intelligent okay so that is why machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence machine learning proposes some methods and techniques you apply those processes apply those uh, techniques in order to make your machines intelligent okay so machine learning is going to be a subset of ai and deep learning is again a subset of machine learning what is the difference between them we will see in up our upcoming slides okay any doubt in the things we three did so far anything you want to ask you can please put your question in the chat box on the content which we covered so far if anything is to be asked all right so let's now understand we we have understood what is artificial intelligence now let's understand what is machine learning okay so as i told you it is a subset of artificial intelligence which enables machine to automatically learn from data and past experiences without being explicitly programmed okay machines will learn automatically how automatically for learning what do you give machine you give him give machine data and the past experiences okay and the using that data and the past experiences machine will be able to learn okay but we are not programming it we are not writing any program okay let's say as a child as a parent i want to teach my child the difference between a apple and a red apple and a red ball okay what happens i i try to show my child apple and a ball multiple times till the time he understands that how apple is looks little different than ball the shape the change in the shape between apple and ball till he is able to distinguish between them i keep teaching my child again and again i keep showing the image of apple and ball again and again to him but i'm not explicitly uh, right telling any logic to him or writing any program or writing any telling him any method to distinguish between a uh, apple and a ball okay so you are enabling your machine to learn to distinguish let's say between apple and a ball by providing your machine many images of apple and many images of ball okay keep supplying multiple images of apple and ball to your machine till the machine understand the difference between apple and ball keep giving multi lot amount of data to your machine okay but don't program it explicitly don't write rules saying ki if size of apple size of apple is let's say 5 cm or long then it is a apple otherwise it's a ball so don't write any rules for that okay machine learning enables your machines to identify patterns in your data and make predictions with minimal human interventions humans are not needed or the need of human is very minimalized when you are using machine learning okay so what do we do generally in machine learning we take a huge amount of data okay we give it to a machine okay as i told you the example of i want my machine to understand or classify or to understand which image is ball and which image is an apple i want to understand that so what will i do multiple images of apple and ball i will i will call it as my data multiple images of apple and ball 
i will call it as my data and i will supply this data to my machine okay i will supply this data to my machine so machine will try to understand the difference between apple and ball we call it as we will try to build a model we'll try to build a model which will be able to classify apple image from the ball image so we try to build a model and for building this model we apply some machine learning algorithm okay we'll we'll learn now what is that machine learning algorithm and once the model has been created it is ready we will apply a new apple image to the model and we'll try to understand is this model able to differentiate between a apple image and a ball image so predicting outcome apply data to a machine try to build a predictive model using machine learning algorithm okay what is that algorithm we we'll see ahead and once the model is ready apply new images of apple and ball to it and try to understand is your model accurately able to differentiate between apple image and a ball image okay so let's take another example now frequently we come across this term data set okay so i am trying to show you here one data set which will be used for predicting house price okay for predicting house price so this is the data set being used okay so you can see in my data set i have some columns like the size of the house in square feet how many bedrooms it has how many bathrooms is it has the year in which the house is built how old the house is okay the location of the house with by entering the pin code by entering the detailed address the latitude and longitude the exact location where the house is present let's say so all these are the what do i call them in machine learning features what do i call them they are called as features okay so these are the features that i am using to predict what to predict price of the house so what i am doing when i am using machine learning and i have collected this data okay for a house number 1 which has 6209 square feet area five bedrooms five bathrooms it is built in year 1986 the price is this much for another house of this much area the house price is this much so we are providing this entire data to our machine learning model okay we will be providing this data to it now when we learn about this data set i told you these are the features okay or we i can call them as independent variables what do i call them as independent variables okay and price is dependent on these variables the price of a house is dependent on the size of the house bedroom bathroom your build so price becomes dependent variable price is dependent on this variables or these features which i have in my data set so these are the independent variables and this is my dependent variable so starting from id till longitude all these variables or all these features what i have i call it as predictor variables okay and this is my outcome variable that i want to achieve all right so in artificial intelligence or sorry in machine learning what do we do we collect this data this is a historical data or the past data okay so for a particular house what was the price we have collected this data and then what do we do we divide this data into training data and testing data what is a training data let's say i have information about 100 houses so the general approach is information of 80 houses information of 80 houses out of 100 i will give this data of 80 houses to my machine learning model to teach that model that if num as number of bedrooms increases the price is going to increase as the square feet area increases price is going to increase from the data the machine will understand the pattern what is the pattern here as the size of the house in square feet increases you see there is a change in the price the price is increasing 
if the property is very old okay if the property is very old the year built value also has an effect on the price if it's a old house the price value will decrease the price value will decrease so all these parameters have an impact on the price so machine learning model will understand the relationship of these attributes with the price of the house as i said one of the relationship is as size increases price increases as uh, the built your built is the old value the price of the house is going to decrease so this kind of relationship is established by a machine learning algorithm okay so that a machine understands it on its own as a human i am not telling it that if uh, size is more price is more if a uh, uh, building is old price is less that i am not telling the machine understand this pattern in my data okay all right so we learned four new terms now dependent variables independent variables okay these are my independent variables the output i try try to get is my dependent variable because price is dependent on this i divide my entire data set in two parts training data set and testing data set generally the division is 80 to 20, 80 is to 20 or 70 is to 30 if i have a data of 100 houses i will use 80 houses for training the model for teaching the model okay what is the price relationship of price with other parameters okay that is teaching the model the relationship and what is a testing phase in testing phase the remaining 20 houses ka data i will give to my trained model the model which i just now trained i give that 20 houses ka data means i give this as input okay this entire record i give as input and then i try to find out what do i get as the price of the house okay i try to get what is the price of the house okay so we use training data to train the model and then we apply testing data to understand whether model has generated house price which is mentioned in this table whether model could predict the price which was similar to the price which is there in the in this data set if it is similar okay for a data record 100 it said that the price is 50 lakhs and the table the data set also has the same value or nearly same value for the 100th house we said that the model is working fine it is able to predict house prices correctly for all the testing samples then i say that model is trained correctly otherwise i have to retrain my model by changing some parameters okay now let's see the process of machine learning okay so we are looking at the machine learning process for any application if i want to apply machine learning for that application the very first thing i need to do is define the objective okay define objective so let's take an example suppose i want to uh, understand what will be the height of a person and i am giving weight of a person as input i am giving weight of a person as input and i am trying to predict what is the height of that person okay so what is my objective here what i am applying as input height of a person is a input okay so that is my independent variable and what i am trying to predict weight of the person i am trying to predict so that is my dependent variable okay so the very first step is understand for your application which are dependent variables and which are independent variables if i take another example let's say i want to predict whether a person has a chance of having heart attack in near future i want to predict whether, whether there is a chance to have a heart attack in near future okay and what are the inputs i am using for that the pulse rate of that person 
from the last two three months what is his bp value from last two three year uh, months what is his cholesterol two three months or from in, in the last year what was his cholesterol levels okay his whether the person is obese or not does it does he have smoking and drinking habits okay what is his lifestyle so all these parameters are used in order to predict whether a person will have heart attack or not in near future so we have to define the objectives first understand the dependent variables and independent variables so that is the very first thing define objective okay understand the dependent and independent variables okay then you have to understand this the problem is of which category is it a regression problem or is it a classification problem okay i will tell you what it is so identify dependent and independent variables and understand whether it is a regression problem ya yeah, classification problem then comes the next step where you start gathering the data okay if i take an example of predicting heart disease what is gathering data means what what will i do for predicting heart disease what kind of data do i need the person's blood, uh, blood blood pressure levels for a certain week also yes. some symptoms which predict that the heart rate is increasing yes so i will use information like what was his bp from certain months what is his cholesterol level is he a obese person so data gathering and data gathering is a very important step in machine learning process and this is the step where you spend lot of your time and the accuracy of your application or accuracy of your machine learning model depends to a great extent on whether data gathering is done properly or not so you will try to gather data by visiting a doctor and who is treating that who is a family doctor of that person and you will try to cap get all the data about that person from the doctor or from the person itself if he has a record of his bp levels and cholesterol levels and so on i will try to get it from him okay if i take another example recognizing face of a person okay i want to do a face recognition okay so for face recognition what is going to be a data i need a data of multiple people's faces okay one option is i go and click pictures of people whom i meet who are my classmates who are my teachers who are my mentors who are my family members i keep clicking pictures of those people that is how i do data gathering or you have a website called as kaggle we visit that website kaggle and we download the data that we want okay so data gathering is the process where i collect data by visiting a source from where there is a chance to get a data or i manually generate data by like clicking pictures of my own okay on my own now whatever data you have gathered you store it in one file it's in a csv file we generally use okay csv files we generally use then comes data cleaning preparing your data which can be given to machine learning model so whatever data you have captured that may have some errors so try to remove errors from your data and that is called as data cleaning or preparing data for model okay so in data preparing what do we do so let's say here i come to this data set okay and uh, if for the square feet parameter for some of the records there are 100 records in my data set and for some of the records if i see that the square feet value is zero that means it is a incorrect data so i will have to change it the square feet value if it is zero change it okay it may happen that the value is missing only it is not zero but it is not present dash is there at the place of square feet or at the place of bedroom dash is there value is missing value is incorrect or value is not in the correct format okay let's say for zip code the zip code is not a five, five or six digit number but it's a 10 digit long number which i from which i understand it it's a invalid zip code so in data cleaning
we look at the records of our data set and we look for missing values incorrect values and data in a wrong format and data in a wrong format if these are the cases try to change that data okay try to change that data if it is a missing value what can i do i look at the entire data set and i understand what should be the approximate value for this record so i manually enter something okay so that is what a data cleaning process is and it is a important process okay then comes data exploration okay you explore the data exploratory data analysis we call it as okay data exploration means you will try to establish okay before i create a machine learning model as a human i should understand my data set properly okay i should understand the relationship of these variables square feet bedroom bathroom with the outcome variable price how is how the value of these parameters are going to change the value of price so i am trying to establish a correlation between independent and dependent variable okay so this will help me to understand better which machine learning algorithm i should use or how should be structure of my machine learning model so in order to get more information on this i will try to understand the relationship of independent and independent variable which we call it as data exploration then comes building a model building a model means what see whatever data we have as i told you i will split the data in training and testing i will split it in the training data as a training data and as a testing data 80% of the entire data set goes as training remaining 20 for testing i will use so let's say uh, 80 records i am using for training so one by one i will apply these records to my model neural network model to teach him what should be the price when the parameters are this okay so that's called as training the model okay after a model has been trained what do i do i apply a record or apply data from the testing data set okay i apply a data from the testing data set and try to understand if i give this information which i have this record let's say i have not used for training so if i give this record as input to my model is it able to predict the price properly as as mentioned in the table is the price getting predicted properly or not so i am evaluating the model for its accuracy how accurate my model has learned i i evaluate that okay and if it has not it is not accurately working i will change some parameters of the model we call it as parameter tuning i will change the uh, learning rate i will change the activation function so i do the parameter tuning and once again then train it and then do apply unknown data sample and try to understand whether prediction is happening properly or not okay so this is the entire process of applying machine learning to any problem any doubt in this define objectives collect data get it from kaggle or you click pictures or you collect data from a doctor so that's data gathering clean your data for missing the values for incorrect data you clean it do data exploration try to establish the relationship of between independent and dependent variables train a model okay by applying training data to it train a model the model that has been trained give test data to it understand whether model is predicting properly or not if it is the accuracy of the model is not as per the expectation do hyperparameter tuning and so on okay all right so this is how i have shown training data is being applied to the machine learning model to so that the model is understanding the relationship between in, in dependent and independent variables okay now comes the important part what is a type of machine learning these are the types of machine learning supervised learning 
unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning have you come across these terms earlier mostly third year students might be knowing supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning these are the three types of machine learning okay what happens in supervised learning okay let's understand this is one of the application we are trying to build a machine learning model okay this is how the model has been shown the machine learning model is to be constructed and what the model model should be able to do some images of the animals will be providing to the model and model should be able to classify those images as whether they are of lion category or of the dog category whether the image is of a lion or is it of a dog okay so you need to build an application which can distinguish dog image from the lion image for a human it is easy we know how lion looks we know how dog looks so we can easily distinguish but machine doesn't know what is lion and what is dog so we need to teach machine that if you see a image of this kind it is a lion if you see a image of this kind it is a dog so to the machine learning model we are giving these images of different images of lion and dog and they will be labeled every image that we are giving to a model will be a labeled image it will have a tag all lion images will have a lion word attached to them lion label attached to them all dog images will have a dog word attached to them okay so in case of supervised learning we are training a model by labeling a data so the labeling action we did for the data is the labeling of the data acts as a guide for model training it is as a supervisor we are helping the model as a supervisor okay as a guide we are helping him that if you encounter an image of this kind it is a lion otherwise it is a dog now in machine learning what is the problem here the problem is given images of the animal you should be able to classify them or categorize them as lion or dog so classification of images is a problem given to us okay what are my uh, independent variables here and what are my dependent variables here the dependent variable is i am trying to give a label to every image whether it is of lion or whether it is of a dog okay what i will be doing in supervised learning all the images of all the different images of lion and dog i will take let's say around 500 different images of lion in different surroundings at different locations with the different lightning conditions i have captured and with different position of the lion i have captured so this wide variety of lion images i have captured at dynamic locations environment positioning of the lion with the background changes with the lightning conditions where the image is captured i take all these different images i give it to a model okay i take different images of dog dogs of various breeds okay i will try to collect dog image of different different breed and will try to say that if any of this image is encountered it is a dog image so we give a labeled data to a model then we call it as a supervised learning if the data we are giving is a labeled data then we call that machine learning model as a supervised learning model because we are guiding the model in understanding what is the difference between lion and dog we are guiding him to understand the difference between lion and dog and that is why it is called as a supervised learning okay again here we will be from the entire images let's say i have a data set of 10000 images i will use 8000 images for training and remaining 20 2000 for testing so i trained the model i then i start applying the test images the images which i had not used for training purpose those images i will apply now and i will try to understand is my model able to differentiate between lion and dog when i give image of a lion could it classify it correctly as lion when i gave image of a dog could it classify it correctly as dog okay 
that's what that is how supervised machine learning works by giving a labeled data all right then what is unsupervised learning when to a model you are giving a data to which there is no label assigned okay so the same question now has comes under the category of unsupervised learning because here i am providing different images to a model but i am not telling which is of lion and which is of a dog or which is of a rat i have not labeled them so the data is unlabeled data the model has to learn on its own the similarity and differences among different images so let's say 8000 images were applied to the model it will understand that two lion images look similar to each other so they should belong to one of the group the dog images they are being applied there is some similarity between the images which were which are of a dog so based on the similarity the dog images will be grouped together okay so the data that is applied is a raw data unlabeled data there is no labeling model has to understand or group or cluster the data that means the animals based on their similarities and differences in various classes so all the lions because they have some similarities what are the similarity the height of this animal is similar okay if there are between these three images the height looks similar the color looks similar the texture looks simi similar the tail size and shape looks similar okay the it has uh, the facial uh, facial uh, what do you say features like nose eyes mouth jaws all these look similar so based on these similarities the images will be grouped together but the model doesn't know it is of lion it will say that all these images look similar and they belong to cluster 1 or class 1 similarly these images of a dog based on the uh, size of the dog size of the tail based on his nose shape eyes shape all that since the images of dog will be similar to each other they will be put in a different group okay so this is what is your unsupervised learning where the algorithm is given unlabeled data and it uses similarity and differences among the data to cluster them or make groups of the data similar images goes in one cluster and this similar images belong to different clusters okay then the third important type of machine learning is reinforcement learning okay we all know or we all have read about self driving cars how does self driving cars are driven self driving cars uses reinforcement learning self driving cars uses reinforcement learning so in reinforcement learning there is no data as such provided there is no data as such provided so what do we have so let's say there is a agent in this case in case of self driving car agent is nothing but a car okay agent is nothing but a car this car is kept in an environment means it is placed directly on the road let's say okay it is placed directly on the road it is it is exposed to the environment the camera of the car the sensors of the car will try to understand the surrounding or will try to understand the environment will try to capture what is there in the environment so the car or the agent we will say will try to capture the location of walking people the location of other vehicles on the road location of traffic signal color of the traffic signal all these parameters of the environment are used by this agent or by this car in order to make some take some action so taking some action means move towards right move towards left change a steering wheel by 30 degree to the left or to the right or reduce the speed these are some of the actions the car will take after studying the environment and if car is able to move towards its destination correctly by taking this actions if car is reaching close to the destination that means it is reaching close to the goal state the goal state is one location where the car has to reach so if the car is able to reach to the goal state without colliding with other 
objects on the road then a card is given or then a reward is given then a reward is given but whereas after performing some action like changing steering wheel to a 30 degree to the right if it collided with any other car or with a obstacle then a punishment is given okay so reinforcement learning works on the concept of reward and punishment the agent has to learn environment after learning environment takes some action after taking the action if the agent is reaching close to the goal state is able to reach to the goal state or going close to the goal state the agent will be rewarded okay otherwise the agent will be punished and what is the objective here the objective here is to maximize this reward the objective here is maximize the reward okay if any punishment is given the agent understands ki previously the environment values were these and i took a action of moving to the right and that was a wrong action as i am punished that means that was a wrong action so he keeps this in mind and doesn't repeat the same mistake again whereas if he was awarded for his previous action then he understand that this particular action which i took earlier is correct because i am awarded i got a reward that means it was a correct action so i repeat the same action again second time the similar situation arrives so that is what is a reinforcement learning it is the same as how humans learn if we are left to a unknown place what and we want to find a route to reach to our destination what do we do we sense our environment and we start taking actions we start moving in either left right or a straight direction by moving in any particular direction if we are reaching close to the goal state okay then we keep moving ahead till we reach to the goal state that means we are we are getting rewarded in order to move ahead in the forward direction but if we collide with any obstacle or if our we are due by taking any action we have the distance between the destination and us has increased that means we will be we will be punished okay so we won't be repeating the same action again in future this is what or how a reinforcement learning works so these are the three types of machine learning supervised unsupervised and reinforcement anybody has any doubt in this no doubt all right now given a problem a problem that we are trying to solve so some of the examples as i told differentiate between lion and dog is one problem or uh, differentiate when i am giving a face of a particular person as input recognizing it that this is ashwini or recognizing it as a xyz person so correctly whether the person is correct or incorrect recognition or recognizing the price predicting the price of the house predicting whether rain will happen by looking at the weather conditions so all these are the problems that we are trying to solve these problems which humans can easily solve but machines needs to be taught how to solve these problems okay so given a problem we have to first identify what kind of problem it is is it a regression problem or a classification problem what do you mean by regression problem so if i look at this application here i have been asked to predict price of the house any time i have been asked to predict the continuous value the prediction of a house is a continuous value these values are they are the continuous value then it is a regression problem it is a regression problem okay if i give temperature humidity level as input and i am trying to predict amount of rainfall that will happen today amount of rain, rainfall that will happen today so prediction of rainfall by looking at weather condition i am trying to do this again this is a regression problem why because amount is a continuous value so for your application you have to first identify whether it is a regression problem or is it a classification problem 
What is classification problem? Can anybody help me? What do you mean by classification problem? Based on certain parameters or criteria, you classify if a certain object is a animal or a certain object is human. So based on certain parameter, you try to categorize input belonging to any one of the group. So like the example we saw, we were giving images of a lion and dog and we were trying to classify it as a dog or a lion. So this is called as a classification problem. We are trying to classify. Okay. Or another example is Gmail uses spam filtering. The mail coming to your inbox can be either a spam mail or a non-spam mail. So cat classifying images, emails as spam and non-spam. Okay, this is a classification problem. I'm giving signature of a person as input. And what I want as an output, whether that signature is a genuine signature or a forged signature. So I'm classifying. Okay, so these are called as classification problems. I am dividing my input in two classes, genuine, forge, spam, non-spam, binary classification, binary classification problem. Uh, possibly I have a multi-class classification. What do you understand from multi-class classification problem? When the input we categorize in classes. There are no two. More than classes are possible. So let's say you are trying to recognize digits, handed digits. Digits, digits that I am writing can be either 0, 1, or till 9. Anything is possible. So this digit recognition is a multi class classification problem. Characters A, B, C, D, or alphabets A to Z, multi class classification problem. So the problems are of two types regression and classification. Regression is when the output, you are trying to predict a continuous value, and that's a regression problem. If you are trying to predict a class or a group to which your data belongs, then that is a classification problem. It can be binary classification or a multi-class classification. Okay? Now, we learned what is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning. We learned what is regression and classification. Now, let's learn about some algorithms used in popular algorithms. So supervised learning means what? We'll summarize now. When you give label data, then that is a supervised learning. Which kind of problems you can solve by using supervised learning algorithms? Both regression and classification problem. If your problem is regression or classification, you will use supervised learning that time. Okay? So any problem, if it is a regression or a classification problem, I will be using supervised learning for that. The data that I give is a label data. For training, since it is supervised, we say external supervision is present. This is basically by labeling a data, we are guiding the model. What is correct and what is wrong? Okay. What is the approach? The model learns by labeling input to the known output. The model will try to understand relationship between the input and the output that is attached as a label. To that input, the label that is attached, what is the relationship between the input and the output label that is understood. So some of the algorithms that are used for supervised learning are linear regression. If it is a linear, if it is a regression problem, like predicting amount of rainfall, predicting price of a house, predicting weight of a person given has given his height. All these are the regression problems. And in order to solve these regression problems, one of the very first choice people use is linear regression algorithm will be used. Okay, regression problems are solved using linear regression algorithm. Okay. Whereas if the problem is a classification problem and the data you have is a labeled data, okay, the data you have is labeled data, then you are ahead with other algorithms called as logistic regression, support vector machine, and 
K nearest neighbor, K n. Okay, these are the popular algorithms. Okay, these are the popular algorithms: linear regression, logistic regression, and support vector machine. Okay, these are the popular algorithms. If it's a regression problem, use linear regression. If it is a classification problem, use logistic regression, support vector machine, and K nearest neighbor. Okay. If the problem is clustering, clustering means you want to categorize your inputs into groups, but the data available to you is unlabeled data. Then which algorithm will you use? If you have unlabeled data, then we have clustering algorithms called as K-means, C-means, DB scan. All these are the clustering algorithms which we should use. Okay. if we have a data which is unlabeled data okay so in unsupervised learning we have unlabeled data and we want to put data in different clusters we want to make grouping of diff, uh, group data based on their similarity and differences we have these choices k means c means even db scan and so on reinforcement learning reward based system there is no data as such given you have an agent which is placed in an environment agent learns by sensing the environment taking some actions if actions are going towards goal give a reward if actions are not going towards goal give punishment there is no supervision it is based on trial and error method okay so learning sarsa are some of the algorithms which are used when reinforcement learning is to be applied so these are the different machine learning algorithms okay you have to select any one of them based on the data you have is it labeled or unlabeled data and based on whether the problem is regression or classification problem you have to select any one of these okay any doubt so far because selection of algorithm machine learning algorithm is a important step any doubt till this point no one has any doubt thank you all right so here the same thing has been written regression when will i apply regression in case of supervised learning when the output or the predictor variable is a continuous quantity my aim is to forecast or predict something that is predict stock market price or predict rainfall amount and so on the algorithm i will use is linear regression if it's a classification problem and the data is labeled data when will i call why this classification problem because my output is a categorical quantity that is why it's a classification problem what is my aim for unknown data i want to find what is it category compute the category of so classify emails as spam or non spam So the algorithm I will use is logistic regression, KM, neighbor, random, many algorithms. Okay. If the word regression is here, it is not a regression algorithm. Huh? Logistic regression is used for classification. Even though the word regression is here. Okay. Then clustering is putting data in different groups. It is unsupervised learning because data is unlabeled. the objective is to group similar items into clusters example is find all transactions which are fraudulent in nature okay if i want to find whether credit card fraud is happening okay then i will try to find out all transactions which looks fraudulent to me and i will try to group them together so k means the uh, is db scan there are multiple uh, scanning algorithms or clustering algorithms available all right So here, in detail, all the algorithms are mentioned. For regression, which all algorithms are possible: linear regression, neural network regression, support vector regression, decision tree regression. Covering these algorithms is not the limitation of today's session. Such a point of error in depth. Okay. So these different machine learning. Learned what all we have learned so far. We learned history of AI, 
we learned applications of ai in different domains then we started with what is machine learning some uh, concepts related to data set we saw what is the process of machine used in machine learning uh, model building what are the different types of machine learning supervised unsupervised and reinforcement how to categorize a problem as regression classification or clustering problem so all this we saw and what are the algorithms that can be used for regression classification and clustering kind of problems okay now this machine learning has some limitations what are the limitations of machine learning machine learning models fail to perform when you have a data of higher dimension as the dimensionality of the data increases machine learning fails to give the accurate result okay as the dimensionality of the data increases so for that this example is given let's say this is a line of 100 meter you can call it as a road of 100 meter length and on that road a coin has been dropped okay and you have to search the coin on a road of size 100 meter so this is this process can be considered as a simple simple process because you are dealing with you have to search a coin on a single line okay now if i have a instead of a, searching a coin on a line if i have to search it in a square okay I, if i have to search it is it it has been dropped in a square okay then for searching it i need to do a lot of computations so the path becomes long since i am working on a two dimensional data searching a coin is going to take more time whereas if i am working on a three dimensional data searching a coin in a three dimensional space is again going to take more time so as the dimensionality of the data increases time needed to perform a same action increases okay and there is less chance that the we will be able to uh, find that point in this search space okay we are able to locate that point in a search space is a question so the machine learning model has this limitation curse of dimensionality in higher dimensions the model fail to perform accurately now what is dimension actually so if let's go back to the same data set here these all independent variables i have they are nothing but dimension one one dimension so now here my data is of how many dimensions count the number of independent variables how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 so dimensions my data has nine features it has so more the number of features more is the dimensionality of the data so if for recognizing face i am detecting important points on my face focal points on my face and i am detecting around 100 focal points of my face so the data dimension is 100 because 100 features i am extracting okay 100 depend independent variables i have so 100 is the dimension for my data okay so dimension means the features of your input that you will use for prediction purpose that is dimension and as the dimension increases means as the features increases machine learning model will take more time to understand relationship of these features with the output variable machine learning model will take more time to understand how these features are related to the output variable or dependent variable so more time will be taken by machine learning model okay that is why we say as dimension increases machine learning model fails to perform accurately all right dimension is nothing but the features in your data okay or in your csv file the number of columns in your csv file are the dimension of your data so that is one of the limitation of machine learning another limitation is it needs manual feature extraction so what is feature extraction if i am building a machine learning model to that model i will give image of a car and the model has to classify whether the image belongs to a car or it is not a car whether it is a car or whether it is not a car so 
so again this is a binary classification problem again it is a binary classification problem you are trying to classify the input image as a car and a non car image if i am using any machine learning algorithm like k nearest neighbor or i am using support vector machine or i am using logistic regression decision tree any machine learning algorithm that i use i have to do you as a human as a programmer i should explicitly do feature extraction feature extraction means what i need to understand from the input image what features i can use feature means number of wheels in my car the height of the uh, car the shape of the car okay number of uh, the, the presence of a steering wheel okay number of glass windows so all these are the features and in, if you are using any machine learning algorithm which features to use to distinguish a image as a car and non car image has to be decided by a human human has to decide from this image which are the prominent features i should use to say that this is a car image and this is a non car image okay so this is a feature extraction which has to be done by a human in case of a machine learning model so which is actually a challenging task for a human okay let's take another example if i have to classify uh, between a cat and a dog image and i am applying machine learning to do the task means i am using any of the machine learning algorithm which we saw just now then i have to extract features like uh number of eyes uh number of ears shape of the eye size of the eyes tail size of the tail shape of the tail okay so all these feature i need to extract manually and to the model i am not applying the image as a input i am applying the value of number of ears number of eyes shape color texture these values of the feature is given as input to the model so feature extraction has to be done by as a human and the values of these features needs to be given as input to the model whereas what do we do in deep learning why deep learning is uh, popular nowadays because deep learning doesn't need feature extraction manually humans don't have to do any feature extraction we can directly apply the image of a car to our deep learning model model will understand on its own the computer will understand on its own if the image has four wheels the height is so much the uh, the steering wheel is present the shape is so the color is so it is a car image so this is done automatically by our system by a model we don't have to teach model uh, which features ka presence to look for in order to distinguish a image as car and non car in case of machine learning features needs to be extracted manually and the value of those feature is given as input not the image of the car value of features given as input to the machine learning model and here the image itself is given as input okay so that is a major difference between machine learning and deep learning so two limitations are the important ones that as dimension increases machine learning fails and feature extraction is manual and hence we go for deep learning okay one more thing amount of data whether you will apply machine learning or deep learning even depends on how much data do you have with you size of your data set decides whether you can work with you can apply machine learning or whether you can apply deep learning if you have a data of 1000 images or 10000 images we will, we have to work with machine learning okay because if you want to use any deep learning model you need a huge amount of data generally if you want deep learning models to work perfectly millions of data the size of data set should be very huge then only deep learning will work properly so you have to first understand how much data do you have how many face images i have for facial recognition how many uh, animal images i have for animal classification look at the data you have and then decide whether to apply machine learning or deep learning okay but as the amount of data increases 
the performance of deep learning increases. But as the amount of data increases, machine learning doesn't guarantee a improved performance. Improved accuracy is not guaranteed by machine learning. But obviously, in deep learning, if you apply more data, more images to the model, it will obviously perform better. So performance increases if amount of data increases in case of deep learning, which is not the case for machine learning. Okay. Okay. So how is deep learning now different than machine learning? That was the question. How is deep learning different than machine learning? We learn two things, no? This is a deep learning model. Okay, we have this deep learning model. How is this deep learning model different than the machine learning model? In deep learning model, to this input layer, input layer has these, these dots which are shown. They are neurons. Okay, like how brain has a neurons. So similarly, these are the neurons. Generally, the neural network architecture is divided into three layers. Input layer, hidden layer and output layer. Input layer means what? Input layer will have neurons where you will apply the input. So if I'm applying image as an input, okay, image of a car, I'm giving as an input. So how many pixels the car image has? If it is uh, 100 by 100, 128 by 128 is the size of the image. So 128 multiplied by 128. These many pixels the image will have. Okay, and the red, green and blue value for each pixel, red, green and blue value for each pixel. If it is a color image, red, green and blue value of each pixel. Okay, so 128 into 128 multiplied by 3, R, G and B, 3. That becomes the size of your image and that you give as input to the model means how many neurons you want, 128 multiplied by 128 multiplied by 3 whatever value you get you need those many neurons that means every pixel ka value will go to one one neuron every pixel ka value from that image goes to one one neuron that's your input layer where you apply input and what is output layer output layer may again neurons are there if it's a binary classification problem you will have two neurons if you are if it's a multi-class classification problem you are classifying digits as from 0 to 9, there will be 10 neurons here in the output layer. Okay, if it's a um, alphabets A to Z being classified, how many neurons you will have here? 26 neurons you will have in the output layer. So number of neurons in the input layer depends on how many pixels are there in the input image. And number of output neurons depends on every neuron, ke, every class ke liye ek neuron chahiye. And in between, there are these layers, which we call them as hidden layers, okay? which we call them as hidden layers. Okay, so neuron from input layer is connected to every neuron is connected to other neurons in the hidden layer. So like this, there is a huge connection between all the hidden layers, input layers and so on. This is what the model is. In case of machine learning, what I apply to these neurons are the values of the features number of eyes number of ears size of the tail shape of the tail all these values i apply to the neurons whereas if i'm using deep learning what i'm applying as an input directly the whole image whole image means pixel ka values not the feature ka value pixel ka values because in deep learning i don't do feature extraction at all features are extracted automatically by the makes work very easy okay deep learning models mimic the brain functions how we behave how we learn how do we learn we learn from environment okay we learn from environment we we see the input image and we can classify that it is of a dog or it is of a cat okay so like the like how brain can distinguish between cat and dog image deep learning models can also do it deep learning models mimic the way brain functions they learn from experience these models are capable to focus on the right features themselves requiring little guidance from the programmer so feature extraction is automatic and it is not manual in case of deep learning model okay suppose you want to use deep learning for face recognition 
so all the important facial points okay all the important facial points will be extracted by the model itself you only have to give this face image as input to the model the model will understand positioning of nose the iris the location the iris volka location the size of the forehead the size of the lip the points of the lip all these values which are important one to classify face of one person from another okay to classify face of one person to another what are the important features i should be using it is automatically decided by the model programmer will not tell which features to use if it is a deep learning but if i am using machine learning for face recognition as a programmer i have to calculate the value for uh, size of the iris uh, size of the nose location of the nose size of this pinpoint so these values i calculate by writing a program feature calculations i do and then i supply values of those features to train the model okay so that's the difference so deep learning for face recognition as i showed this is the kind of architecture you have there will be input layers there will be output layer and in between there can be as many hidden layers possible more the number of hidden layers we have to increase the hidden layers and the neurons in in it to get more accuracy okay generally how many hidden layers you should have is decided by trial and error okay there is no fixed theory on what how many neurons i should have in hidden layer and how many hidden layers i should have there is no fixed theory or logic of selection of this parameter it is completely based on trial and error number of hidden layers and neurons in hidden layer has to be chosen in trial and error manner so in case of deep learning see this is your data set faces of so many people you are giving these images as input one by one the pixel values of every image is applied as input first person ka pixel values goes then second person ka goes third person ka goes okay at the first hidden layer the edges of every faces the edges are detected okay edges are detected in the first hidden layer at the place of first hidden layer at the place of second hidden layer the important uh, organs like nose eyes and all they are detected and then a combination of these objects is then somehow detected in or relationship between the different uh, objects detected is then identified in hidden layer 3 so means as you go ahead in the neural network deep learning model more fine fine details are captured more fine details are captured as you go ahead in the model okay in deep learning there are three architectures cnn rnn gan so now if i have to use deep learning for my pro project which one will i use i decided i understood that i have a huge amount of data set my data set size is very large so i decided that i will use deep learning rather than machine learning okay now comes the question from the available architectures which architecture should i use whether i should use cnn rnn or gan how do i make this choice anybody has any idea when to use cnn convolution neural network when should we use this cnn if you are working on a project where your in, where your inputs are images okay where your your inputs are images cnn is always the best choice okay cnn is always the best choice when you are working on images okay so they are used for task related to computer vision or image processing you are processing an image by applying some algorithms computer vision yes. vision of a computer means computer will be seeing a image like human see so cnn is very good in modeling spatial data such as 2d and 3d images and videos so if your input is images and videos go for cnn model the cnn model will automatically extract features and patterns within an image to understand to classify image or to detect object if i give you a photograph and i ask you to detect which are the different objects present in this photograph whether a building is present a cycle is present a car is present that is called as object detection 
so for these object detection kind of problems cnn has to be used so when image video is given as input to the problem is is to be is your input then go for cnn feature extraction need not be done manually as it is a deep learning model features are learned directly by the model automatically it will understand which features to use to distinguish a car from a non car image advantage of cnn is it can produce highly accurate results other advantage is suppose i have created a cnn model to classify a image as car and non car image the same model the same cnn model i can use with some modification the same cnn model i can use to distinguish between a uh, dog and lion i have to just apply the data set which i have the model that I has been that has been trained i just freeze that model same trained model i will use i will apply a new data set of cats and dogs and the model will should be able to classify cats and dogs also okay so this is called as transfer learning okay transfer learning already pre trained models you have on some other data set they were trained to use those models with a new data set to do your job of classification this is how your cnn architecture looks there is a input layer some convolution there is there pooling layer is there some fully connected layer means your hidden layers are there and then the output layer i am not going into details of the architecture this is actually beyond the scope of this session these are the popular cnn architectures available resnet alexnet vgginet net lenet these are the popular cnn architectures available and are being used by the people for their projects okay all these are the pre trained models they are pre trained models means for some application the model has been trained the model has number of hidden layers neurons neurons has their own weights and all okay the model is pre trained and you will you can use these pre trained models for your application okay for identifying whether a signature is genuine or false to classify face of a person for all these for all these things you can use these already available models these are the pre trained models available commercially then comes recurrent neural network okay now when will you go for recurrent neural network let's say uh, google has a predictive search mechanism no as in when i am searching in google i start typing the next word it predicts for me okay it predicts the next word for me okay so google is a search mechanism so let's say i go okay and i start searching the software i type then it it uh, predicted engineering so after engineering it is trying to predict engineering let's say i type quality so after quality it will try to predict quality assurance attribute management so this is called as a predictive search by of google which uses artificial intelligence okay it is predicting the next word in the sentence okay this predicting the next word in the sentence so in these kind of applications where the next word depends on what are the previously typed words by me the next word is dependent on what i already typed this is called as time series data or sequential data we call it as you understand what is sequential data so sequential data is any data which has a relationship okay like uh, if i say uh, predicting a next word in a sentence is a sequential data okay predicting a rainfall on a particular day is dependent on what is the weather 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 condition today, the weather condition yesterday. So rainfall value of today depends on what it was the weather today and previous day. Right. So this kind of data is called as a sequential data or a time series data. So if you have a sequential data or a time series data, this data cannot be applied to CNN. So CNN cannot handle sequential data. because output generated by cnn okay this the output that cnn generates depends on what you currently applied to it 
what is the input that you gave at time instant t that input is used to detect predict the output at right right now what input was give, given earlier is not used for predicting the output at time instant t so what was the input at t minus 1 and t minus 2 instant is not considered while predicting the current output by this neural network suppose i am predicting the stock price at for today this stock price value is has some relationship between what was the stock price yesterday or day before yesterday so this is a sequential data so i cannot use cnn model or any other uh, feed forward network for predicting these kind of sequential data if your objective is to predict work on a sequential data or a time series data we should go with recurrent neural network so rnn has a ability to memorize previous inputs rnn can memorize the previous inputs so the output generated at time instant t you can see this diagram c x of t x is the input at time instant t this is the output generated okay x of t minus 1 is the input given y of t minus 1 is the output generated so while predicting the output at time instant t plus 1 it will consider what was the input at previous two or three stages x of t and x of t minus 1 ka value also it will consider so we say h of t h of t means this is a function of h of t minus 1 and x of t what was this h of t minus 1 and what is the input applied now and what was the value due to previous input that also has to be considered for predicting the current output all right so this is how in case of sequential and time series data we go with rnn so natural language processing what are what are the applications of rnn you want to do captioning of the image what is image captioning what is image captioning this is useful for blind people let's say those who cannot see the surrounding okay and they capture a photograph of the place they visited so this using rnn model a caption can be given to that image the photograph that they clicked a caption can be given to that image and obviously for giving the caption objects of the photograph first needs to be identified so object detection is done using the model after understanding what are the objects some suitable caption will be given the blind and the using speech to text conversion whatever has been identified will be spoken out will be converted to audio signal and will be and the blind person can hear what what he had what is there in his surrounding okay so that is image captioning needs sequential data time series prediction as i said predicting stock price predicting rainfall amount natural language processing natural language processing is when you are working on sentences okay if i give you a very big paragraph i give you a news article and i ask you to summarize that article so we call it as text summarization okay so it uses natural language processing understanding the sentiment from the twitter post sentiment analysis so for all these purposes if your object of this kind we should use rnn recurrent neural network so the available ar architectures are lstm long short term memory and gated recurrent unit gru these are the available architectures okay then comes gan generative advanced okay we can make use of the gan in gan basically what do we have no there are two models two neural networks one is a generator model and the other one is a discriminator model what is the job of the generator see some real face images let's say are present in the data set images of a real person is present in the data set this generator model will study the images from this data set and will try to generate new faces which are not there in the data set will try to generate new faces on its own by looking at the faces which are currently in the data set will try to generate new faces 
they may be the people who doesn't actually exist on the earth for such kind of people the artificially faces are being generated so these are fake samples are being generated these fake samples this this new generated faces are then given to the discriminator which is another model and what is the objective of this model the model should be able to classify between real samples and the fake samples the model should be able to classify whether the input that was applied the face image that was applied belongs to a real person or is it a generated image if discriminator could correctly classify between fake samples and real samples that means generator is still not accurate and has to work more in generating faces which looks real faces generator will keep tuning itself or will keep training itself again and again till it generates image which discriminator cannot distinguish as fake and real this generator has produced a image which discriminator thinks is always a real image it cannot distinguish between fake and real image till that time the discriminator and generator keep working together till the discriminator is able not able to distinguish between fake and real sample discriminator thinks that they are real images only even though the fake images are applied so correct they are we so similar they are then that is a gan generative adversarial networks unsupervised learning algorithm okay so these are some of the uh, gans available in the market cycle gan text to image conversion ke liye one gan is available progressive gan okay so text to image means image is given and from the for that image a textual description is generated using gan architecture okay so what is difference between deep learning and machine learning deep learning you will use it when you have a large amount of data but if you have a less data you have to go with machine learning if you use use deep learning you are going to get a high highly accurate results means the classification is going to be accurate the regression is going to be accurate machine learning compared to deep learning gives lesser accuracy okay the problem with deep deep learning is the resources that you need the computing power you need is huge in case of deep learning because large data hai large data jitna zyada data utna processing power zyada lagega so that is why you need gpus to train the model okay to teach the model you need gpus but machine learning hai algorithm hai so you can even train it on your cpus also central processing units graphics processing unit needed for deep learning since uh, data is huge in case of deep learning training time is longer your comparatively training time is smaller hyperparameter tuning hyperparameter tuning means what if the classification by a model on the test data is not happening accurately you need to change the learning rate activation function you will learn this later number of hidden layers number of neurons in the hidden layer you will change these parameters this is called as hyperparameter tuning changing the model parameter to till accuracy is obtained in classification or regression that's called as hyperparameter tuning can be tuned in various different ways but whereas if you want to tune your machine learning models there are only limited capabilities limited methods are available to do hyperparameter tuning so these are some important differences between deep learning and machine learning okay with this we stop our today's session okay so whatever i tried my best to make things simpler but this is actually a very vast domain very vast contains it has and it's really difficult to cover it in one hour or so okay i'm posting a feedback link uh in meet please fill that i request students to please fill the feedback link feedback form
please copy the feedback link and fill it i'm ending the meeting now thank you all thank you ma'am thank you ma'am